So we're going to quickly do in this section, we're going to breeze through some of the basics on how to go from raw anamorphic footage to properly converted footage you can use for editing. And to follow along, you're going to need to grab the GoPro Studio software uh, 2.0 or above. The reason being is we need this fisheye adjustment control. Now there's a lot of other software out there we can use, and a lot of software that might be better suited for the task, but for now, just to breeze through it, and uh, so everybody can follow along, this is readily available, we'll just download this and install it. So once you have that downloaded and installed, we'll open up GoPro Studio. Now I have a bunch of clips here. We're just going to remove all these. And we'll remove all this. And this is basically what you should see when you first open it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a 1920 by 1080p uh, 30 frames per second file. This is your standard GoPro footage that you normally film. The only difference is we have our lettuce anamorphic lens adapter on here. Now what that's doing is you're seeing it's kind of squishing these perfect squares. These are normally one by one squares, but they're more three by four. They're more rectangular. So what we want to do is we want to remove the standard GoPro distortion from the camera. That way we only have to worry about removing the anamorphic lens adapter distortion later. So it's pretty simple. We'll go down here to advanced settings. We're going to leave our image source as 1920 by 1080. So if you have a different clip by a different size, just make sure it's set to source. Uh, same with the frame rate, just you want to keep your original source footage. Uh, I'm going to keep my footage file format, uh, I'm going to keep my file format uh, MOV, but you can switch it to AVI if you want, but I don't know, not many people would. Quality will leave it high, that way we get out what we put in. And these are the two important ones. We want to remove fisheye, which is automatically set up depending on the clip setting. And we want the project to remember the settings. That way when we import a bunch of new clips here, uh, it'll remember those settings. But before we bring in more clips, we want to pick a directory to save it in. Now, we can't really change the name too much, or even if we can, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm still going to separate these clips just for organization. So I have my lettuce straight lines section here, but I've created a subfolder in my video section called lettuce GoPro Studio Fix. So we'll save all the footage there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll bring in these various format file sizes. And once, since we, we set it up to remember all settings, it's going to remember everything automatically. It doesn't matter what type of size footage, doesn't matter what the frame rate is because we set everything to source. Um, once that's all set, we'll select all of these clips with a control A or you can just highlight them all. And we'll just add them to our convert list. And once they're in here, you can double check each one by clicking on it, but we're all pretty sure these are good and you can press convert all. And once those are done rendering, we're going to want to bring those into uh, sort of an image manipulation program such as After Effects, Premiere, I guess not image, but video uh, mainly. And that's one thing to note. This, this trick really isn't going to work for images the way GoPro Studio works right now. I can't export um, images files. I can only do MOVs or AVI. So we'll, we'll jump into something like that later with the images. But for now, the only other thing you should know is that this is going, if you, if you filmed in Pro Tunes, the, the more washed out sort of logarithmic footage, it's going to apply a Pro Tunes LUT by default can't be removed right now unless you're coming back into uh, GoPro Studio. Um, we're not going to be doing that, but in the future when you import your footage in this little preset folder, there will be a none thing. So if you bring it back in here, you can remove the Pro Tunes LUT, which is basically a color grade. If, uh, if you're not sure what the LUT is, basically it just takes your footage and applies a sort of color profile to it. But there's no way to avoid that when we're going out to say, let's say Premiere or After Effects. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, because later on we're going to probably not want to do this. But again, just, just to keep things moving right now, we'll stick with GoPro Studio. So once you have that all converted, we'll open up Premiere here. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on here. Let me start from the basics. So this right here is your 1920 by 1080 image without the lettuce anamorphic adapter and without us removing fisheye. Okay. So let me just drag let me just drag this out on its own here. So again, this is your normal 1080p GoPro footage. There's no special lens, there's no special removal of fisheye. Um, however, this is what it looks like when we add the lens anamorphic adapter. This is the footage that we just converted in GoPro Studio. So you see it's still kind of squished. And let's bring in the footage from that we just converted. So you're going to notice we lost a lot of the edges here. Um, and you're going to notice our, our squares are still kind of squished. They're not one to one. They're, they're kind of three by four. So just to kind of go back and forth here for a second. So with the normal GoPro lens, we're going to feel like we're kind of squished in. And then when we 
at the lettuce anamorphic adapter. We got more information on the sides, a little more on the top, and it kind of feels like we're more pulled out, but there's a heavy amount of distortion and we're, we're barely squished compared to GoPro, which their squares are pretty much one-to-one, -one, except as you get further away from the lens and especially as you get towards the top and bottom. So take that away. And then this is the lettuce with the normal fisheye distortion removed. So you're noticing the curves aren't as extreme, but we're also losing a lot of that side information. We don't really have a ton of control over that with the GoPro Studio software, which is slightly unfortunate, but right now it actually gets the job done pretty well. And we're kind of zoomed in on these squares, which isn't really the best example for this. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to transform it into this, uh, these perfect one by one squares. And you're going to notice we have a lot more information to work here. It's actually fairly easy once you done that, um, that initial fisheye removal. Once you can get past that state, you can basically just stretch it out fairly easy in any other software. So let's show you how I got to this state. Bring back this guy. So in whatever software you're using, what you want to have control over is your transform controls. So your, your height and your width. But in Premiere, this is usually defaulted to just having control over both, so you can't really separate them but you need to usually unlink these. In After Effects, it's a little chain. Sometimes it's a little lock button. You just want to be able to separate these two um, values. That way we can control these in individually. Um, also, a lot of times this will just say like 100%. Some, some software will actually give you the actual film resolutions. Um, for now, we'll just deal with this percentage. So I'm going to make my footage 50%. And in order to do the math to, to to do the math to solve this properly, it's fairly easy. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your width and times it by 1.33. So we'll take 50 and we'll multiply it by 1.33. And that's 66.5. So we need to stretch this out to 66.5% in order to get perfect one-to-one -one squares. Easy. So let's say, let's say instead of being in percentages, you want to know just the resolution. So let's say our footage is 1920 by 1080. Now we want to stretch out the 1920. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by 1.33 and we'll get uh, 2,553.6. Now that would be the value you put in maybe to your comp setting to stretch it out. Let's say your footage is in 50%, it's 75. Well, just times that by 1.33 and that's 99.75. So if our footage was 75 on the scale height, this would have to be 99 point, what was that, 5? 75. Um, I don't think Premiere does 75, yeah, it's going to go to 8. So it's not perfect, but you kind of get the idea. Our squares look fairly perfect. And now since we, you know, let's, let's do this at 100%, you know, 100, obviously, times 1.33 is going to give us 133. So we're gonna have a lot more information that's stretching along the right and the left side. Now, the, the positive is if um, I wanted to readjust this, I can sort of slide the footage over here, slide the footage over here, maybe there's something a little more interesting on the left side of the frame and I wanted to cut out the right. I'm not actually losing information and everything is kind of converted properly. So that's the basics on how you, you get into converting this footage. Now, what that looks like all stacked up against each other is this. So, in the upper left here, we have our raw anamorphic footage. On the right, we have GoPros without the anamorphic lens. And on the bottom here, you can kind of see, is this correct? Oh no, it's set to uniform scale. So we want to change this to 66.5. Oh, that's the wrong one. We want to switch this one to 66.5. And you can just see how much more information we're getting out of that. Now there's a little image quality loss because of this, but it comes with the territory. And that's a quick basic rundown on how you're going to convert your lettuce anamorphic GoPro footage into something that's more usable. Now as interesting as these squares are, let's move on to our next video with more practical examples like zoos, and snowboarding, and just fun stuff. Alright, let's check that out.